a good one. What is going on everyone? So today's a little bit of a different day. I came out here, I wanted to try going offshore a little bit, see if I could get on some snapper, maybe some grouper, and tried a couple different spots this morning and really couldn't get anything really dialed in, but on the way back in, about two miles offshore and about 20 feet of water, I found some good little uh, bottom, so I started dropping down, but the thing that I noticed really in the area was the amount of mackerel. There was mackerel everywhere. So I decided to capitalize on that, and yet he's pretty, pretty full of mackerel right now, so I think I'm gonna do a little catch and cook, teach you guys how I like to do smoked fish dip, tell you the recipe, tell you how long, tell you everything that I do, but let me show you guys how I caught these fish. We're just like two miles offshore in like 20 feet of water and found a good little spot right here. Right there. Seems like just like a little section of hard bottom here. 20 feet of water, about two miles offshore. Not far at all. Oh, there's some, uh, there's some Spanish around. I feel like these Spanish are gonna start cutting me off on the way down. Oh, that was a good fish on the bottom. Let's see if I can get one of these Spanish seeds. This. Swiping at it. Got him. They got him. Just cast them out and was slowly reeling them back. Not a bad Spanish. Looks like we might be doing some fish dip. Also got to hook up a smaller setup if there's just going to be Spanish around. Might put the blue runner on, see if there's any kings with them. There we go. Get him in. That's a good Spanish. He swiped at it and then you missed it, but still got him. There we go. First fish of the day, really. Nice little Spanish mackerel. Perfect, I'm gonna bleed them out, put them on ice. There we go. Look at all these Spanish mackerel. Come on. They are fired up right now. There are so many Spanish around. There's about 50 of them behind the boat right now. These are big Spanish too. Like this is a real big Spanish. Come on over here. And there we go, another good Spanish. We're gonna be making some dip. Big old green back right there. I'll put the blue runner on the big rod, hoping that we get a kingfish. Hanging out with all these Spanish. Come on. That did not take long. There's a lot of Spanish around. Come on over here. Might have them foul hooked, because this guy's fighting harder than any of the other ones. Yeah, I definitely have them foul hooked. So, big Spanish. And he's in. Yeah, these are tankers. Probably like a 25, 26 inch Spanish mackerel. Right there, let's bleed them out. All right, got the blue runner. So 
all I'm doing is putting a small little bit of wire on one of these live bait hooks on a smaller rod. All right, just rigged up. Grab one of these baits. Grab a couple of them. Throw them out. Chunk the water a little bit. And just cast in there. Oh, got him. There we go. Yeah. Oh, he popped off. Dang it. All right, cast him out. Oh, oh, there we go. Got him. There we go. This is so much fun. Oh, he popped off too. What? Rehook itself. Yeah, it did. That's why. There's so many of them circling it. Just eat it. There we go. Got him. There we go. Oh my gosh, how do they keep popping off? Only want a couple more, really. And these are all clearly keeper size Spanish mackerel. They only need to be 12 inches to the fork. And these guys are definitely well above that. There's one. There's one. Let's see if I can keep this guy hooked. Charging the boat. Hey, dude. Couple of them with them, too. Little Spanish. He's a, he's the smallest one so far. Definitely the smallest one so far. Definitely still a keeper though. They got sharp teeth, so make sure you got a pair of pliers. There you go. This is super simple. Anyone with any sort of like skill level when it comes to fishing can come out here this time of year. Just slightly offshore, beautiful conditions right now. And these mackerel are everywhere. You can do this with, you could literally come out here with shrimp. They'll do the same thing. You can come out here with lures, some gotchas, maybe some spoons, anything that's like very fast moving and shiny. They really like those too. And you guys can come out here and have a day catching these fish. Just make sure you watch their teeth. Maybe use a little section of wire like I am or some heavier, heavier leader or long shank hooks. You guys should be good to go. Let's see if we can get them really fired up. There we go. That should fire him up. And the bird. I'm on. Charging the boat. Charging the boat. There he is. Ooh, okay. Not a bad one. A couple with them. Look at these mackerel. Crystal clear water that we got right now. Come. Come on. Be number five. I recommend bleeding your Spanish mackerel just to help get the meat quality a little bit better. Um, and all that means is just kind of sticking your knife in their gills and cutting it right there. But obviously, I can't show that because YouTube would demonetize. Get this guy back out. This is the time of year where Spanish mackerel are going to be everywhere. We're in 20 feet of water. You can get them from piers, you can get them from docks, from shore. You can really catch Spanish from from anywhere really. Oh my gosh. Yep, I just saw so many chasing my bait there. You can see them in the water. That's so cool. Come on up. That's a big one. I mean, that's a good one. Would really like a kingfish to show up, but I'm not gonna complain too much. These are all very healthy size Spanish mackerel. Take the pliers, they got razor sharp teeth, which is why you need the wire. Whoa! Almost fell. Oh. 
Come on. There we go. Oh, crap. There we go. There we go. How big is this one? That's a good one. That's a good one. Come on up here. Woo! Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's another solid, solid Spanish. A couple pounds to them at least. There's so many Spanish out right now. And this isn't like a wreck. This is just a little area of, I'm on, of hard bottom. And there's just a lot of Spanish around, as you can see. It is not taking long at all. Surprise, there's no little kings or anything tied in with them. It's just all Spanish right now. You can see the bottom. That's how clear the water is. 20 feet. Little guy. I'm just going to get a release on him. See you, dude. Oh. Got hit there. Missed it. Waiting for him to come back. Maybe the bait's still there. Like that. Just like that. This might be a better one. Oh. Yeah, not bad. Look at them all down there. There's so many Spanish. I'll get a release on this guy too. Wait for some tankers. Good Spanish right here. See you, dude. Oh, well, I had a tooth nick me there, and yeah, it's already bleeding. They got sharp teeth, so I'm at seven mackerel. All right, so I have my fish right here. Beautiful Spanish mackerel fillets. I have them actually brining overnight. So I did a mixture of one cup brown sugar, one cup salt, uh, I just eyeballed some Old Bay, probably a half a cup of Old Bay, and then about four or five cups of water. You just put it in a big Ziploc and let that brine overnight. Really helps keep that uh, moisture in the fish while it's smoking. Plus it also gives it a nice little flavor to it too. I can really notice I let out these mackerel and these fillets look like the best mackerel fillets that I've ever seen while trying to make smoked fish dip. So hopefully this turns out and ends up being one of the best. Plus I had, as you can see, an extra piece of grouper. I think that's red grouper I've had in my freezer for a while. I'm like, ah, we'll go ahead and throw that in there. I like to mix it up a little bit. You have all the, the oily mackerel, a little bit of that kind of uh, fatty grouper. Hopefully it just kind of gives it a nice flavor in there too. Not to say that if you just do mackerel, it's not gonna be good. I've done it plenty of times with just mackerel and it's great doing that. So let's go ahead and add it to the smoker. Hi, George. Go ahead. I do the thinner fillets at the top. Make sure they're not overlapping or anything. Push those back in, fill each one of these layers. The best we're gonna get. I'm gonna give it around 225 to 250 for two hours. All right, the fish have been smoking for two hours now. You can see the smoke is rolling right now out of it. That's beautiful. Check the temp right at 225. Perfect. Oh yeah, look at that. That is beautiful. Now it's time for the fun part. All we have to do is go ahead and shred all of the meat off the skin 
And if you can find any pin bones in there, just make sure there's not bones in your fish tip, but pick a filet. Like this one right here, it's already falling apart. Look at that. That's just a chunk of meat right there. Make sure the skin peels right off like that. I keep the skin on when I fillet it. I literally just kind of fillet quickly the entire side without worrying too much about bones or anything. Cause then you just get to this point, it, it's super easy. So let's take it, your bowl, just shred it to however fine you want it to be. And also, I'd like to mention that I let this kind of cool off for a couple minutes. You don't want to do this right out of the smoker because it will burn you. The plan is just for me to go ahead, shred all this meat and go ahead and put it in the fridge. And then tomorrow morning, I'm going to show you guys the wet ingredients I like to use for the dip and all the vegetables and everything that I put into it too. So tonight I'm just going to go ahead, shred all this fish and then tomorrow morning I will come back and show you guys how to actually put the dip together. All right, here we go. I went ahead and used a little food processor, kind of chop up some onions, celery, carrots, and two jalapenos. So it was half an onion and about half a cup of shredded carrots and celery with two chopped up jalapenos in there. Took the seeds out, kind of mix it all together into this bowl. And just gonna kind of distribute it evenly amongst the the fish. Now I got this two pack of cream cheese right here. It's Philadelphia cream cheese. I also got some Duke's mayonnaise. So we're gonna try and do an even distribution of one pack of cream cheese with the Duke's mayonnaise in each one and then kind of split up the, the uh, vegetables in each one as well. I'm gonna start with the, the veggies first. Try and split about half of this in each bowl. Go ahead and mix that in. You could use a spoon or you could use your hands like this. Again, I'm using the gloves because this will just make your hands smell like smoked fish for days, I promise you. I'm doing this outside because no matter how careful you try to be like that, there's gonna be bits of fish flying everywhere. I might split this up actually. Now we get our wet ingredients. I'm just gonna eyeball this. These all seem a pretty even amount. So I'll take about two thirds of this one. Put it in there. One third in that one. And then split this one. Two thirds. Bang. And the other third. Yeah, that's pretty even. All right, and then you take your mayo right here. Try and get even amount. Just like that. I'm gonna try mixing it and see how the consistency goes. And then if you want it a little more liquid, then you add a little bit more mayo, but just get your hands in there. Start getting dirty. I honestly prefer a little bit of a thicker uh, dip. One where you kind of almost need like a a spoon or a fork to get it on your, your cracker. Consistency is pretty good. Might do a little bit more mayo. Seems to kind of harden up a little bit in the fridge. So, but in the meantime, let's start mixing over here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more mayo in each one. Add some to that bowl. Try and get this back down to two bowls. There we go. And what I like to do, kind of pat it in there, kind of compress it down a little bit, just like that. Take the gloves off. We're done messing with the fish. Now I'll just take some old bay right here, kind of sprinkle it right over the top. You get a little extra flavor and it makes it look a little pretty, you know? But I recommend once you mix it all together like this, you leave it in the fridge to kind of let the flavors all kind of blend together and mesh together. I'd say put it in the fridge for like two hours before you serve it. Then all you do, put a little bit of the, the Reynolds wrap or whatever this is over the top, put it in the fridge, give it to friends and family. 
Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.